Well, you've got your fire irons, the coffee is hot, it's time to cook breakfast over the campfire. So we're going to take our skillet that we forged in the blacksmith shop and we're going to cook a couple of eggs. All you got to do is just kind of hang it from the fire irons here. Well, that's not going to work. We need something to set our skillet on besides just balancing it on the side of the fire pit because that won't cook very evenly and it'll probably fall in. So let's make a skillet holder. Welcome back to Black Bear Forge. Now the skillet holder that I'm going to make is really quite simple. It's adjustable for height, holds a skillet right over the fire where you want it, swings out of the way when you don't want it. Only one piece of material, no moving parts. So let's head to the shop and see how this is going to work. I start this project with about 34 inches of 3 8 square bar. The size and the length isn't absolutely critical. If you're going to use a real heavy skillet, you might want to size this up. I wouldn't go much smaller than 3 8 square bar unless it's just a real small skillet. You might get by with 5 16 So that works out to be about 86 centimeters of 10 millimeter square bar, something like that. And I like to just bend this over a piece of pipe. I use a little bending wrench. This one's an old monkey wrench. I just hold that to the pipe and bend it around. Now, if you're using a gas forge, the door needs to be big enough to get the entire thing in, and that's really convenient. You could certainly do it in a coal forge and just heat up the parts you're going to bend. But if you're using a gas forge that you can't get it in, you might have to go to a torch to heat it incrementally or try to get the entire thing hot, bend it in one heat, and hope you don't have to go back in the fire. Of course, your skillet sits on this better if you keep it flat. The last thing I want to do is make this ring straight off the support bar, so something like that. Again, straighten it up, clean it up. If it isn't quite perfectly round, we can go back and fix these things. Shouldn't say not quite perfectly round if it's not quite perfectly in line. And that's pretty much the end the skillet will sit on. With that little skillet, this may be a little bit big. You could make it a little smaller if you wanted to. Now this is cooled off enough, I can hold it. It's time to work the other end, the end that allows the magic of adjustability in our skillet holder. And this starts with a little taper and a curly cue that are Pretty much just for looks. The curl has to be perpendicular to the ring or it's in the way later. And you could twist this if you want, but I've never gotten real serious about twisting these. That's all I need to do there. Now we need two more highly specialized tools. I need a pair of channel locks, although if you've got a pair of tongs just the right size, you can use tongs. This just works very nicely. And you need a round bar to use as a mandrel for this next bend. Now this round bar that you're going to bend this around has to be slightly larger than the square bar. It's 
larger than this diagonal measurement here. And that's so that when you bend this skillet holder around it, it will slide up and down the square bar. So whatever your square bar diagonal measurement is, a little bit bigger than that. For my half inch square bar, I am using a round bar of three quarters of an inch. Do some tests first, make sure everything works on your project. And here again, this is some place you don't want a real long heat. You just want it to bend where you need it to bend. We're just going to spiral this around. It needs to go another half turn. I like to bring the arm right over the, the little curly cue. It seems to work better that way. So we need to heat it up just a little bit more. It's way better to do it in a couple of heats than it is to have that long, lazy bend. You've got to try and tighten up then. Just heat that up. Looks like one more little short heat here. It's pretty, well, that's not bad. So the last thing we need to do here is sight right down it. Make sure it is perpendicular to the pin. If the pin's twisted in the vise, don't make it level with the ground. Make it perpendicular to the pin. And the other thing is make it a 90 degree angle to the pin or slightly elevated so that when you put a skillet on there, it, the weight of the skillet brings it to 90 degrees. You don't want your skillet at an odd angle. This usually takes a little fiddling and unwinding to get it off of here, especially when you stop and talk about it because it's had time to cool and shrink. But pretty much that is it. So now we've got our skillet holder and our skillet, and that skillet's going to fit this very nicely. But what do you do with this thing? How does this work? You can't just hang it from the crossbar like that. That's as silly as hanging the skillet from an S-hook. This has to go on one of the legs, one of the uprights of the fire irons. And this is best done before you set the whole thing up, before you've lit a fire under it and gotten all this stuff hot. So if you're going to do this after you've been using the campfire for a while, make sure you wear gloves so you don't burn yourself. Also make sure you take everything off the fire irons before you try to do this. This is how S-hooks end up in the fire. On the other hand, that's one of the reasons I used to sell so many S-hooks at a rendezvous, because people dumped them in the fire. And they lost them. So we're going to take one bar out. And in use, this just slides on the bar. You see how that turns, it slides up and down. Tap that back in. Put your crossbar back on. Now you can put your coffee pot back up if you want to. Don't really need the other S hooks because we're going to be cooking in the skillet. So now this thing slides up and down the bar, and because of because of gravity, it kind of locks in. You'll notice that tips a little bit. It could have been kicked up a little bit more. It's worth fiddling with and double checking. But that's really all there is to this. And it can swing forward and be out here if it needs to be, or swing back out of the way if you don't need it. Now it does have one real problem, and one of the reasons I really don't use these very much myself, and that is that sometimes you take the skillet off, it does that. So always be aware that you may need to readjust this a little bit. So it doesn't hurt to take your poker or whatever and make sure that when you take the skillet off that you don't knock that down. Also, if you're going to stir, don't just stir in the skillet like this because you could dislodge it and make it jump down. Hold on to the handle and even if it moves, you got the skillet in your hand. But this should work and we should be able to cook on this now. Now when we made the skillet in a previous video, and I'll link to that right up here, a lot of you were concerned that it needed to be polished so that things didn't stick. Well, let's see how bad things stick, the way I cook anyways. And that involves a fair amount of butter for cooking eggs. That's probably too much. 
This is a good way to season the pan initially anyways, is to use a little bit extra grease in it. Couple eggs over easy, no sticking on the skillet. What I should have done is brought a plate with me. I'm gonna to have to eat them right out of the skillet. Of course, that saves doing some dishes. So grab yourself a cup of coffee, cook up a couple eggs in your skillet, and enjoy a morning by the campfire. I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, but be safe, wear your safety glasses, We'll see you for the next one. Bon appetit.